My name is Dave. I live on 18 beautiful acres in upstate New York, and I harvest wood for my winter burn. I've been cutting firewood on this property for over 30 years. I don't have any formal training, but I do have common sense and a will to always keep learning and stay safe. I've got my tractor, my saw, and my mall, and I'm ready to harvest. So join me on this episode of American Wood Slayer. One thing about cutting wood for winter burn that uh, a lot of people might not think about, but for me, I, it's not about just getting the big logs and the, you know the massive trees and cutting them down. It all burns, so I like even to take the little stuff. Um, for a little effort, you can still get a lot of BTU out of uh, out of a tree, and so this little tree here is uh, is worth probably. A day or two is worth the burning to me, and so it's definitely worth it to take it. So I'll be taking this one down, and uh, then we'll move on to one of those bigger ones. But uh, for now, we'll take this little guy. Another advantage of a smaller tree like this is that I don't have to split it. These logs will be great for those cool, late fall evenings where a smaller fire is perfect for heating the house. If you look at shooting over here. If you look and listen, it's got a nice hollow sound. That's nice dry wood and that'll be great for my stove. So again, it's well worth cutting these little trees, at least for me. That one's got a little bit of a hole in the middle, but it'll still burn. Okay, on to the big tree. This tree here doesn't have really a big top on it, and it looks kind of uh, iffy at the base, you know, rotten, so I'm just going to try pushing it over with the tractor, save myself getting the saw out. So, that's a nice maple, another little guy was uh, standing dead, and uh, nice and light, should be, uh, should be a good burn this morning, so let's put these guys up.
So uh, we're coming up on this big tree. Uh, this is an, a red oak, and uh, it's ready to come down. Turn the camera out here in a second for you. But there should be. You can see the <clears throat> the bark's pretty much gone off of all of it, and there's no top left on her. So this should be a nice tree. Yeah, it sounds nice. So, I think we're gonna drop it. Uh, where are we gonna drop it? She's leaning that way. I think we're gonna <clears throat> go right down that way. Across the trail. There's a trail there, it's hard to see. So, that's a good size oak. It's probably a uh, 14 inch base. So, uh, Let's see if we can drop this thing and start cutting her and splitting her. But before we cut that oak down, uh, I'm going to sharpen my chain. And I wanted to show you a little tool that really works well for sharpening chains. I used to do it by hand with the hand sharpener, but I went down to Tractor Supply and bought this little Oregon battery powered sharpener. And some of you may have this, and I just love it. It makes real light work out of sharpening your chains. And what's nice about this is that as I am now up in the woods with no power with my tractor or ATV they give you clip-on leads for uh, the battery or there's a uh, <clears throat> a 12 volt plug. So I just, this, this tractor doesn't have a, a plug so I'll just clip it right onto the battery. And now I have power to my uh, basically little rotary tool. As you can see on there, let's see if we can get a shot of that. It actually shows you the angles that you can, uh, you know, depending on your uh, chain angle, what angle you, you cut at. So I'm going to be cutting at uh, the 30 degree uh, angle, and I'll show you how that's done. So again, it used to be where I would, I would use this hand tool hand sharpener and it worked fine but it just took a while you know and, and literally you would just be sharpening at each tooth like like so kind of pulling up as you're sharpening it but now with this little guy <clears throat> you just put it in there and hold it at 30 degrees you don't need to hold it long And that's it. And those are razor sharp. So I did notice after I made my first cut that it was at an angle, so I came back and cut it off flat uh, and then dropped it and it went, it went right where I wanted it to go, right down across the trail there. Sawdust here. 
that that chain's nice and sharp now because it's really cutting nicely. <clears throat> it looks a little powderly, powderly on the video, but I think it's because the camera's back so far. But I'm getting some nice sawdust in there, good sharp chain's cutting that. So this is a very nice dry red oak tree. The only flaw to it is that it's been inhabited by ants. So as I split this, I'll see a few, but they'll uh, they'll scatter and it doesn't really bother me. So I see a couple in there crawling around, but again, not a big deal. All right, let's get splitting. down there. That's my woodlot so we actually overlook kind of a valley in the back there. You can see the ridge line up there. shed that uh, actually works really well and uh, I've got uh, I would guess about uh, 13 to 15 face cord in here right now and uh, it works well for keeping things out of the weather and it keeps the wood out of the weather and uh, dry and I just haul from here to the house. That's it for this episode. If you like these videos, please give me a thumbs up. Until next time, stay safe, be smart, and have fun cutting. I'll see you next time on American Wood Slayer.